Hello and welcome to Don Labs. This episode we're going to be talking about the transistor. We're not going to go into too much detail about the science of how they work and why. We're just going to briefly cover the types of transistor and their general uses. You can use them for amplifiers and you can use them for switches, digital switches in a circuit. As you can see by the tree that we have on the screen, you have a couple of main types of transistor, the BJT and the FET and these are subdivided into different categories. The BJT has an NPN type and a PMP type, which we'll go into in just a second. And the FET has a similar differentiation between the two types, but they're called N-channel and P-channel. So we're gonna start off with the BJT. It's a bipolar junction transistor. The bipolar junction transistor has three terminals, a base, a collector, and emitter. These transistors are activated by current so applying a small amount of current at the base of the transistor will allow current to flow from the base to the emitter and also from the collector to the emitter. With no current at the base, the no current flows from the collector to the emitter. So the transistor will be off with no current and on when you apply a current if we're talking about the NPN type. The PNP type is a reverse. When you apply a current, the transistor turns off off and also the collector and emitter are the other way round in a PMP the current actually flows from the emitter to the collector and you can tell this by the arrows on the electrical symbol the total current flowing out of the emitter is the sum of the current from base to emitter and collector to emitter and this is why they can be used as an amplifier and when they're used as an amplifier they're said to be in the active region now there's a cutoff region which means they're completely off and there's a saturation region which is when they're completely on and that is when they're being used as a digital switch. The base of the transistor is physically connected inside the transistor itself. So when current flows, the current is flowing from the base to the emitter as well as the collector to the emitter which is slightly different from the other types of transistors. Now the FET transistors stands for field effect transistor. There are two different types, a junction field effect transistor and a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. Now when you're just getting started the MOSFETs will probably be the most common FET that you will use. They actually have four terminals but normally the fourth terminal is connected internally in the body of the transistor so you don't have to worry about that. The pins on this transistor are called the gate, the drain and the source, so slightly different from the BJTs. Whenever you read a data sheet, you will get a picture of how to read each leg on the transistor. With the FETs, normally you have the back plate of the FET looking away from you, or with the BJT transistors, you have the flat part facing you when you read which legs are which as you're looking at your data sheet. Normally there is a picture on the data sheet so you should be able to differentiate which pins are which. Also you can check out my video on the multimeter and that will give you another idea of how to measure your transistors and how to decide which pins are which on the transistor. So back to the MOSFETs and the JFETs. These transistors are not activated by current. The gate is not physically connected inside the body of the transistor. They are activated by a voltage potential, the potential across the gate and the source. Now they do have an N channel and a P channel type, which is very similar to the MPN and PMP. Now with the MOSFETs and the JFETs, what's actually happening is as you increase the voltage potential, the resistance in the path of drain to source is changing so the voltage potential goes up the resistance goes down so more current flows most JFETs are depletion mode so at zero volts from gate to source the channel is on so gate potential depletes the drain to source current now the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors the MOSFETs are mostly enhancement mode so at zero volts gate to source, the source to drain channel is off. So as the potential increases, current increases. So we're just gonna do a quick circuit of a BJT transistor, just to help you visualize what's actually going on here. 
in the circuit. So we have our breadboard. I'm going to use this transistor. And as I said, you read the transistor with the flat facing you like this. So with the flat part facing you, I know this transistor is ECB, emitter collector base. So I'm going to place that down here. I'm going to use an LED with a current limiting resistor, a 220 ohm. I'm going to put my power supply into the breadboard. I'm going to run 3.3 .3 volts. So I'm going to take my current limiting resistor and I'm going to go from the positive of the breadboard into the anode of an LED, which is the longer leg. It's going to come out of the anode into the cathode of the LED and that will be going to the collector of the transistor which is the second pin on this particular type it goes through the transistor out of the emitter to ground the emitter is the first pin so I'm going to attach that one to ground I'm going to turn on my power supply I'll have a current path going from the positive rail of the breadboard through the current limiting resistor into the anode, the long leg of the LED, out of the cathode of the LED into the collector of the transistor, it's collecting the current if you want to remember it that way, out of the emitter of the transistor, it's leaving the transistor that way, conventional current flow that is, into ground. This current path will only connect to ground once the base receives a current. I'm going to attach a resistor to the base of the transistor. Now, as you can see, if I connect the base to ground, this is how we'll be holding the circuit open. So there's no current flowing into the base. Therefore, no current is flowing through the collector into the emitter to ground. Now if I was to apply a current to the base of this transistor, it then allows current to flow through the collector to the emitter, creates a path to ground and we have a lit LED. And again, if I was just to take that off and put that to ground, there we go, it's off. So that is an example of a digital switch. So this is very useful if you want to connect something to ground but you would like to use, say, for example, a microcontroller. An example of this would be an LED cube. If you've got your planes set as the negative and you want to basically connect them to negative, but you want to send a signal to do that, then you could use a transistor because your signal is a positive voltage. That voltage will activate the transistor, which will create a path to ground. This is just one example of how we can use this. MOSFETs. Exactly the same setup in the circuit, except you won't be using the collector and emitter, you'll be using the drain and the source. And with the MOSFETs, they are very, very sensitive, so it's only a very small voltage that's required. So normally, you put a resistor, a pull down to ground across the gate of the MOSFET, because once they're on, they like to stay on. So you have a pull down resistor on the gate, and that will turn your MOSFET back off again once the voltage is not being applied. So that is the basics of the transistor, very very basic definitions of them. I will go into further detail on later videos but it does get a little bit scientific on how they work and why they do what they do. Don't forget to like and subscribe, thanks for watching and don't blow up! <laughs>